Good morning. Good morning. Peace to the Lord be with you all as we gather to worship today. I want you to think about, is there anyone in your life, in the history of your existence, that you have felt it was a bad influence on you? No pointing fingers, okay? It's not an out loud question to answer, uh, at least not at this point, no names. So I just want you to think about that, and then as we hear our uh, reading today, and I'm going to preach on the psalm, I want you to think about what effect did that have on you, and what effect is kind of lasting from that. And as we listen to that, how does God help us to overcome that? What does God give us to override that? So before we get underway, let's take a moment and greet each other. Stand, welcome those around you, wish each other peace of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Delton. How are you this morning? Good morning. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Preschool? Kindergarten. Preschool. Is there anyone that has a bad influence on your life? Okay, so think about it. So our opening hymn this morning is hymn 797, Praise the Almighty, and we're going to stand for verse 5.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let's pause for a moment, reflect on God's word, and examine our hearts and minds and confess our sins to our Father in heaven, personally and individually. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this week. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may be at peace. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in reading our intro responsibly, which will be the text for our message today, Psalm 1. So, responsibly, half verse by half verse. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. The way of the wicked will perish. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, who nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scholars. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. He is like a tree that yields its fruit in its season. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Let's join in singing the Kyrie.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. We pray together the collect of the day. O merciful Lord, you did not spare your only son, but delivered him up for us all. Grant us courage and strength to take up the cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the scripture readings. Good morning. Today's Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his way, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to and enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land of the Lord, swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Jacob to give them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear the Lord, you his saints. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And at this time, the children are invited up for a children's song and a children's message. So come on up and grab an instrument and help us sing this. Uh, next song.
Good morning. So today, I have a plant with me. And obviously, it's planted in a pod. Actually, I'll tell you the truth, it's a fake plant, so. But, if it was a real plant, it would be planted in a pot, similar to this, right? It would have soil in there, we'd have to water it, things like that. And, however, I want to look at other places that we could plant a plant. And I want you to tell me what would happen to the plant if we planted it in these locations, okay? So the first location here, yeah, a desert, right? So what would happen to the plant if we planted it here? Yep. Yeah, it would die because it would get too hot. It probably would not get enough water, right? It would dry up. It would die, right? Any other thoughts? Yeah, dry up, right? Yeah. It might, yeah, it might just turn into sand itself, right? Perfect. All right, next one. The middle of the ocean. What would happen to the plant? It would die. Okay, but why would it die this time? Too much water, right? All right, first one, we didn't have enough water. Now we got too much water, right? It'd probably drown. And also, there's no dirt, right? There's no dirt for it to have roots and, you know, take hold of anything. So, yeah, it would, it would again die, but for different reasons, right? Okay. Now, what if the plant was planted here? What would happen? It would live. Yeah, I, I'm thinking it would probably live. Why? Yeah, it's, it's got some good soil. We see other green plants flourishing there, right? It's right next to some water. So, yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it would probably live, right? So that'd be a pretty good place, okay? What about here? What would happen to the plant? Yeah. Yep, it would probably be frozen, right? Yep, it would, it would turn into ice, it'd just be a chunk, and yeah, it again probably wouldn't get much water because all the water's frozen, right? It also wouldn't have good soil because that's also frozen, right? So again, it would die. All right, last one. What about here? It would most likely survive, right? Okay, yeah, we can see that obviously there's some green there. We got some water as well. But if you also notice, there are also maybe some brown patches there, so it might also experience some dry times, right? But like you said, it'd probably still survive. You're pointing something else out? Yeah? Oh, the, yeah, the sky looks good. Yeah, sky also looks favorable for the plant as well, right? So, yeah. So, depending on each of these locations, right, the plant for many of them, would die, but it depends on where the plant is, right? And this one, we said maybe was probably the best because everything's looking nice and green there. But yes, it depends on where the plant is planted, right? So in the psalm that we stated earlier, it talks about a plant, it talks about a tree, and it says when it's planted by a stream, right, that's good because it will produce. It will produce its fruit and it will live, right? And so today we're talking about being affected by the things that are around us, right? Just like how a plant is affected by where it's planted and the things around it, so are we. We're affected by the things around us. For example, if I was to say, hey, Sophie, Sophia, I need you to run up and down the middle of the aisle right here yelling. Ready? We're going to do it together. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Do it! You are about to do it, right? And that's probably not the best thing to do during church, but look at how easily I convinced you to almost do it, right? We almost did it. But that is exactly what happens, right? We're influenced by the people around us, right? And so sometimes that can be bad, just like I was about to have you yell down the middle of the aisle here. Other times it can be good, right, if we have a good influence. And that is what the psalm was talking about, right? It's saying, hey, we don't want to be influenced by all the bad things in the world. We don't want to be influenced by the bad people, the people who aren't following God. We want to be influenced by God himself and people who follow God. And it's said in there also to <laughs> obey the commands of the Lord, right? 
to remember his laws, remember his commands, and follow his word, meditate on his word, right? And so that is what we want to surround ourselves with. We want to surround ourselves with good people, people who follow the Lord, other Christians, and we want to surround ourselves with God himself, his word, and we can also surround ourselves with people who follow God. We can also surround ourselves with his forgiveness and all of his blessings. And so that's what we want to be. We want to be the plant that is planted well by the stream that produces the good fruit. So can you guys fold your hands and say a prayer with me? Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, help us to meditate on your word and to be led by your spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for coming up. The epistle is from Philemon 1 through 21. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, who Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Appia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have towards the Lord, Jesus and all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to apply to you, appeal to you, I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for G Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onus Cyrus whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now is he, he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he may serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might be by compulsion, but of your own free will. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he has wronged you at all, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it to say nothing of your owing, even me, your own self. Yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is, according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, great crowds accompanied Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. 
Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is of no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. And let's join together and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Congregation may be seated. We are going to join in singing uh, from All God's People Sing on the screens. I shall not be moved.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message today is our intro at Psalm, Psalm 1, and I'm going to read just a portion of that one more time. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. It is on all he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we ask, by your Spirit's power, open our hearts, open our minds, open our souls, and help us to be strengthened, strengthened to stand firm, strengthened to not be moved, that in our faith in you, that we would allow no thing from within or from without to influence us away from you, to disturb our faith, to destroy our faith, to draw us out of our relationship with you. Strengthen us that we may, in firm and strengthened faith, find our hope, our rest, our comfort, our refreshing in you. In your name. So, as you had time to think about it, was there anybody in your life that was a negative influence on you? Anybody? Raise your hand. Did you have anyone in your life that was a negative influence on you? Okay, so I'm seeing some hands. Um, now, if you wish to share stories, don't share names. And don't point fingers. Anybody else? Nobody wants to share. Okay. Oh, Roger. Too many. Too many? Okay. Yep. Um, I'm going to share mine. When I was in high school, um, in both my junior and senior years, I was dating a, a girl that uh, we had become pretty close. And heading, uh, as I was heading into college and she was finishing up high school, uh, we thought that, you know, this was getting pretty serious to the point where we were talking about future. But as I was doing so, I was also talking about, you know, thinking about going to the ministry. I had registered for Concordia at that time in Milwaukee and it was all set to go there. But she said, I don't want to be a pastor's wife. And she kept trying to talk me out of it to the point where midsummer I had withdrawn from my admission to Concordia and instead uh, went into Electronics at DeVry Institute in Chicago for uh, a couple of semesters, or actually uh, five altogether, at which time, you know, God was still calling. And he was still pressing on my mind and on my heart, you're not where you're supposed to be, you're not where I want you to be. And so I started talking about it again, and at that point she said, relationship over, I'm not going to do that with you. And at you know, as soon as she did that, my next call was to my mom, call Concordia, I want to transfer, I want to get on the right path here. And so, you know, there's lots of things in our lives that can influence us in negative ways, some in positive ways, but think of all the things in our lives that can influence us in, in a negative way, in a, a way that is taking us in a direction that's not in accordance with where God wants us to be. So as we listen to the psalm, Psalm 1, I want you to see that. Um, wrong scripture reading, Ben. Go to, the, uh, go to the intro. In the intro, I want you to, to see what the psalmist is saying. So the refrain or the antiphon is the first phrase, so we start with the second. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, 
and on his law he meditates day and night. I want you to think about what we see as the progression of how outside influence and maybe even inside weakness can send us down a terrible path. But before we do that, go back to the previous slide again, Ben, and I want you to look at the very first thing. This is the antiphon or the refrain of the psalm. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. And I'm going to ask all of you, are you righteous? And if you're righteous, raise your hand. Okay, some of you are getting this. And for those of you who didn't raise their hand, I'm going to put it to you again. But first I'm going to say this. You are not righteous by the things that you do or don't do. You are not righteous by your own behavior. You are not righteous by what you are capable of on your own. You are righteous if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because he has given you righteousness. He has covered you with righteousness. He has covered you with his perfection. He did so when, you, when he died on the cross and when you were baptized, you were clothed in his righteousness, robed in it and shown that purity. That's why we hand out that white cloth at the time of children's baptisms as the reminder of being clothed in the righteousness of Christ. So at that moment of faith, at that gift from Christ, we are clothed in that righteousness. Now I'm going to ask you again, are you righteous? Every hand should be up, right? And the point is, that's what makes a difference in our lives. Now, how does that influence our behavior? How does that influence uh, how we live our lives? How does that influence how we deal with those around us? See, and what the writer to the psalm is getting at is how quickly, if we allow ourselves, how quickly our spiritual life can, de can degrade and be in a very bad place. Notice the progression of wickedness. It starts, look at the bottom of the screen, who walks in the counsel of the wicked. So it starts with what? Association. Association. I'm hanging out with the wrong people. I'm hanging out with the wrong crowd. I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Uh, I had a friend of mine that, in high school that... Um, we hung out together quite a bit, and if his mom was looking for him, she usually called my mom, and where are they at, you know? And so that uh, was the kind of friendship we had. But we usually had ways of getting each other into trouble. So uh, probably not the greatest relationship. But as I was getting closer to the ministry, and he was uh, heading in, into college, um, we came home from... Uh, college uh, at Easter break. We got together on a Saturday before Easter. And trying to joke, or I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to do, he says, well, let's run out into this cemetery, knock over some gravestones, and see if anything pops up. At which point I said to him, don't ever say that to me again. At which point our relationship started to die. And I haven't talked to him in years. And, and the point is, there comes a time where you have to recognize what's really important. So if you're hanging out with the wrong people, you're listening to them. You're taking advice from them. You're taking encouragement from them. Like Alex encouraged Sophie and Sophia to run down the aisle. Bad ideas come into our mind. And then we take it to the next step. So it's not just sitting in their council and listening to them and hanging out with them. But then it's this. Nor stands in the way of sinners. Now it's not just hanging out with them. Now what's taking place? Now we're joining in. Now we're 
doing what they're doing. Now we're acting as they're acting. And it starts to influence us even a little bit more. And then we go to the next one. Nor sits in the seat of scoffers. So it's not just I'm hanging out with them. I'm not just involving myself with what they're doing. Now I've crossed over to the other side. What's a scoffer? Somebody who's mocking, somebody who's ridiculing, somebody who's making fun of. Particularly those things of faith of God himself. And that's where I talked about my friend from high school. It got to the point where he had become a scoffer and I couldn't deal with it any longer. And the point for all of us is that dangerous progression if we're in the wrong place with the wrong people and listening to the wrong voices, listening to the wrong things, or it maybe even being involved in the wrong things. And the point for all of us is that's not where God wants us to be. And he gives us those things to get us out of that, to give us strength. Because what we need to see and need to remember is the danger involved in this. Because when we get to being a scoffer, when we get to being unrighteous, when we get to being you know, lumped in with the wicked, what are we? So go on to the next uh, line, if you would, Ben. A um, little further. Okay, notice what it says at the top of the screen. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Who knows what chaff is? Probably people from farming background, okay? So, Ben, you want to put up that picture? Okay? On the one side, you have the grain. Those are kernels of wheat. And the other side, you have the chaff. So what it basically is is what? All the waste material, right? Okay? Uh, when they thresh in the old days, they would take the grain and kind of toss it up in the air, and the chaff, the wind, going back to the scripture, right, the wind would push away because it was light, it was empty, had no substance to it. But the grain, it would fall immediately because it did have substance. And the point for us is this. When we tend to things that are unspiritual, we tend to things that have nothing to do with our spiritual faith, it tends to leave us empty. And it, because it's empty and it's worthless, we go back to what was said in the scripture reading. Not only does the wind drive it away, but in Matthew's gospel, we hear the words of John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3, and he said this, his winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. John the Baptist was threatening what? Hell. You hang with the wicked, you're going to get burned. And it's just that simple. And the point for all of us is to recognize the danger of listening and being involved with those who aren't going to lead you on God's path. Those who aren't going to walk with you on God's path. Those who aren't going to live with you on God's path. How does God get us out of that? Now go back to the scripture reading again, Ben, and go back uh, one slide from where you were, and I want you to see that. Read it with me. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. Go back to the previous slide, Ben. How many of you know this verse by heart from just as I am? Let's sing it together. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O oh Lamb of God, I come, I come. I think. One of the things 
happens that makes this him so important to us is because we can identify it with it so easily. How many of you have conflicts and doubts? How many of you have fightings and fears within and from without? All of us do. Absolutely all of us do. And it's those fightings and fears within and without. Fightings and fears that come on on us from outside forces. And then those that are pushing from the inside, the devil tempting us and trying to get us down the wrong path. But God wants us in a different path. So he shows us this image of a tree. He is like a tree planted by streams of water. Now as you look at this, notice the tree. Is the tree a pretty healthy tree? Strong? Beautiful, lots of leaves, lots of branches. Wouldn't you just love to sit on that bench? The gentle passing of the water. Now, does that give you any other thoughts about a scripture verse? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me by the still waters. He restores my soul. See, that's exactly what God wants to do for us. As we listen to Paul's letter to Philemon, twice in that letter, he used the word refresh. I don't know if you picked up on it. As Paul says to Philemon, thanking him for refreshing the saints. And then at the end of the letter, toward the end of the letter, he asks, refresh my heart in Christ. So I'm going to ask you, what is it that refreshes us? I mean, we look at this picture and we say, boy, it would be nice on a beautiful day to sit in that bench, enjoy cool breezes off the water and the serenity of the, the water passing and the shade of the tree above us and relax. How refreshing would that be? What refreshes you? What does God give us to refresh your heart, to refresh your soul? As you're facing the fightings and fears within without, with many a conflict, many a doubt, what is God giving you to refresh you? He's giving you to refresh you starts with planting you in the water of your baptism. He plants you by the streams of the still water. He plants you in a relationship of faith. And then it's encouraged. It's instructed. It's blessed. As we're fed with God's word, there we're refreshed. Not only thinking about what we should do and shouldn't do, but recognizing everything that Jesus does, has done, will ever do for us recognizing all of that refreshes us the forgiveness of our sins the covering with his righteousness the ongoing care for our faith the ongoing love and comfort of his presence all of that he gives in what he does and it's like that refreshing image of those streams of water the roots of our hearts and our souls are deep because we are drinking deeply from the refreshing water of God's word and Christ's own body and blood in the sacrament. That is how we're refreshed. Next verse, Ben, would you please listen to what it says here. Read it with me. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me very first verse of the reading from the Psalms, Ben. Listen to the words from that. Read it with me. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Does God know you? Does God know you intimately? And because God knows you intimately, 
Does he care for you intimately? Yes. And that's where we have to go then for our refreshment. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows those fightings and fears. He knows the storms that are coming your way. He knows of the trials and the hardships. He knows the pain. He knows the difficulties. He knows. He suffered and he gave us life. And he loves you. And so he is continuing to strive to refresh your faith in every way, shape, and form, through his word, through his sacrament, through his love, and through the compassion and love of fellow believers. So who should we be hanging out with? First and foremost, Jesus. Secondly, those who love Jesus. Doesn't mean we don't want to have any association with the others. Somebody's got to tell them about Jesus. But we get our refreshing, we get our strength, we get our comfort from the one who does it for us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Our gifts to our Lord are brought forward. As we do that, let's stand and we'll join in singing hymn 785, the first verse. If you forgot to drop your offering on the way in, you can drop it on the way off. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would continue to bring us refreshing through your word, through your sacrament. We are like trees planted by water because it is you who refreshes us. It is you who strengthens us. It is you uh, that we are rooted in and it is from you that we get sustenance. We ask that you would help us in the midst of the hardships, the storms, the droughts, and all the things that go on around us, that we would continue to be refreshed by you, comforted by your presence, strengthened by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with all of those who are in physical need. We pray especially for Sandy Alicia and Keith Larson, who are undergoing testing. We pray for Frank Heckenberger, who is having surgery on Wednesday. We pray for those who are uh, hospitalized, for Shannon Bongle, hospitalized during a pregnancy, for Louis Wassenberg in the hospital, Gerilyn Forthesef still in the hospital, and also for Doug Beal, uh, a Trinity student suffering with illness. We also pray for those who are undergoing treatment, for um, Al Abel, Mark Baldwin, Jan Barkley, Brian Debsky, Karen Hansen, you know, Jerilyn Forseth, Michael Heckenberger, Cindy Heidke, John Kiley, Micah Kohler, Susan Kupski, Jerry Kuschel, Tiana Lang, Roger Nowak, Gene Palomino, David Schmidt, Jerry Schwan, Katie Bedeen, and Glenda Whipperford. We also pray for those who are recovering, for Mary Andrews, Dawn Otterman, Bob Barrett, Thomas Grosnick, Phyllis John, Jill Kern, Mike Klatt, Brenda Olson, Chuck Rentmeester, Harold Sissel, Patty Spielbauer, Cheryl Weiss, and Neil Zastro. We also pray for those who have ongoing health problems, for Neil Anderson, Klaus Becker, Bruce Burt, Louise Christopoulos, Bonnie and David Doby, Tom Dufek, and Sharon Eichmann, Ed Forrell, Luann Grismel, Penny Grambuler, Vi and Ron Howard, Helen Keenitz, Sue Keenitz, Marshall, um, 
Marshall and Sheila Piotr, Tom Meath, Michelle Larson, Mary Perlott, Marion Schmeling, Dawn Schrader, Phyllis Smeester, Bill Wagner, and Bob Zitlow. Provide for them, Lord, strengthen them, uplift them, and bless them with your presence and refresh them with your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would comfort those who mourn. We pray especially for the family and friends of Howard Knudsen, who uh, passed very suddenly uh, early yesterday morning. We ask that you would remind those who mourn, all family and the friends, and uh, particularly Gene, remind them of your love. Remind them that you have conquered death by your death and given life through your resurrection and promise a joy-filled reunion with you and all those who've gone before us in faith. Strengthen and comfort this family with the gift of life and the abundance of your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all Christian ministries around the world. We pray especially for Elliot and Serena Derricks working with uh, Lutheran Bible translators in Cameroon. We pray for our school ministries of Trinity Lutheran School and NEW Lutheran High School and all our sister congregations and their ministries here in Green Bay and throughout the world. Fill us all with the joy of salvation and strengthen us all as we have been refreshed to take that refreshing out into our world. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with all of those who serve in our armed forces, especially Paige, Paige Bogner, Tess and Sean LaRue, Steve Madaski, Roy and Esmeralda McDonough, Garrett Moen, Maggie Knoll, and Nathan Schrader. Help them, strengthen them, bring them uh, faithfulness and courage to carry out their duties and bring them home in peace soon. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, we pray for our president, our governor, and all who are in positions of authority, both elected and appointed. Guide these men and women to turn to you, not stand in the company of the wicked, but recognize what is right and good in your sight, to recognize your authority and submit to it as they govern. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we come forward for distribution. We join in singing hymn 346, the third verse, as our Agnes Dei.
Let us stand and let us pray. I want us to do something different today because I want you to remember the need for being refreshed. I want you to pray the post-communion collect with me. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing. This sounds weird. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. <laughs> Pause for a moment of silent prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Christ, teaching faith and love. Just a couple of reminders as we close today. 
Uh, first reminder is that we've got uh, Ruby's Pantry come. Oh no, to me, not not right. Swine and Dine coming up. Um, I'm going to get back to the school kitchen cleanup in just a moment. Uh, Ruby's Pantry's up there. Also a reminder of uh, Bible classes uh, this coming week. Is it this week, Jeff, that you start? Yep. Jeff starts on Thursday of this week with his class, and that's uh, 10 o'clock, Jeff? 9.30. So 9.30 on Thursday, Jeff's class on uh, Christian Worldview, and uh, that's Thursday morning. Tuesday morning, the following Tuesday morning, uh, Chuck Nearing's class, continuing the book of Acts, also at 9.30, and then also uh, my class uh, Sunday morning. Uh, we will meet today, and uh, we are in the sacrament of baptism, heading toward confession and absolution. Um, as you heard in the prayers, a uh, longtime member, Howard Knudsen, passed very suddenly early yesterday morning. Um, he passed in his sleep, which was a blessing, but he passed nonetheless. Uh, funeral will be on Saturday. Don't ask me the time. I don't know. Uh, haven't even met with the family and the funeral director yet, which is supposed to happen this afternoon. So I encourage you to watch online or look for announcements and our stuff uh, as to when the funeral will be. It will be Saturday. Don't have a time for you. Um, and then um, Swine and Dine, guys. Yeah, that's you. So what's going to happen with cleaning up the kitchen? We're going to work around that. Ask Kathy all your questions. She knows none of the answers. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Swine and Dine coming up on the 24th. We want to thank everybody who has bought tickets so far. Uh, here again, for those of you who don't know what this is, this is our annual barbecue event. Uh, and, and this year, again, we're... we're uh, serving the food and, and raising money for our uh, uh, Lutheran Education Fund, which helps send uh, kids to college uh, from who are members here at Redeemer. So that's what we're raising it for, and it's, it's, uh, it's been a, done, done a lot of good work uh, so far in the years we've done it. Um, the, it's on September 24th. Jeff and I will be selling tickets in the back. Um, uh, we, tickets are 25 bucks for the uh, regular uh, buffet of ribs, uh, of, I'm sorry, of chicken and pulled pork, uh, but if you want a little bit elevated experience, you want to go to the, get some brisket and some ribs, then you get the pit master's table, and brisket and ribs are included on that one too. There will be a, a little uh, reception uh, hour where we have some drinks being served, um, and then we will also have some bucket raffles there. So um, anybody who wants to donate something for the bucket raffles, be happy to to talk to you about that, let us know. Um, and if you just if you can't make it, you still want to donate money. We are taking sponsorships as well. So um, thank you again, everybody who's donated stuff t thus far. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Th this was always designed to be one of these meals where um, a lot of people we didn't need a lot of volunteer involvement. This was just um, a group of us putting this on, and people could just pay to come to it. We didn't have to have a whole bunch of volunteers for it. So. I really appreciate the support over the years. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ben. And remember, when Jesus says, or in, in the psalmist, when he says, you're like a tree, if you watch uh, Marvel stuff, that does not mean you are Groot.
check. Great to see you. 